Ready? Okay. Well, listen, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining me for this community update. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about uh, the charter amendments. Uh, they, are, they are issues two through seven on your ballot. Um, and if you agree with them, you vote yes. And if you don't agree with them, you vote no. Uh, I want to run through a little bit of the ballot language. Every 10 years, um, the city um, has to appoint a charter review commission. We did that at the beginning of the year. Um, and I, I, I got to give a lot of credit to the to the Charter Review Commission, uh, its chairman and vice chairman, um, who really, with the advent of COVID, they couldn't meet in person, so they had to do um, all of their meetings virtual. But they really took a lot of deep dive into a lot of issues, and these are the issues that they put forward uh, to go on the ballot. And like I said, if you agree with them, you vote yes, and if you don't agree with them, you vote no. The first issue is issue number two, and it's called the Transparency of Police Use of Force Recordings. Uh, and I'll do the ballot language um, real quick. It, issue two would require the city to promptly release body-worn uh, camera recordings so that document the use of force by police officers resulting in death or, or serious bodily injury. So as long as the release is permissible under state and federal law. And what I've tried to do, and I know many have tried to do over the last five years is I think government should be as accountable and transparent and accountable um, to the public. And uh, we were one of the first big cities in the state of Ohio to adopt body-worn cameras. This is just one more step or evolving into release of those videos. Um, the amendment is designed, obviously, to increase their transparency and make these important public recordings available to the community as quick as possible. There's still rules and procedures that we have to go through um, if the amendment passes, and we'll do that, and we have until June um, to be able to bring those to city council to be able to do that. So that's issue number two. Issue number three is um, human resource modernization. Um, and issue three would maintain hiring practices that are fair, competitive, and efficient while developing a more inclusive and modern city of Akron human resource department. Um, and I think I've even made a hallmark over these last five years is of having a robust HR department um, and to try to take care of employees as much as we can. Um, Akron citizens deserve the very best out of their city workforce. And this amendment would help ensure that by making city hiring practices open, fair, and competitive and efficient. And this will also enhance the job opportunities um, for Akron citizens. And what we're trying to do is, is take that pool of applicants uh, and make them larger. So anybody who would like to work for the city, and we have roughly 1,800 employees um, right now, is open up those opportunities to be able to do that. So that is issue number three. Issue number four is purchasing reform. Um, and just a little bit of a context, the city spends a significant amount of money um, on purchasing goods and services every single year. And what we're trying to do with issue four is um, provide the city with greater flexibility to obtain these goods and services from local vendors at competitive prices and update the minimum purchases required by the Board of Control and City Council approval to mirror state rules. In short, is that we want to provide some of those bidding opportunities that if you have a firm that provides our goods or service that the city may need, a lot of times we were stuck with some arcane rules and regulations about how we would need to publish those um, opportunities or, or when you needed to come down to City Hall to be present if we opened them up. This modernizes those practices so we can take advantage of, obviously, whether it be social media or our own website or other vendors or other opportunities and other avenues to say, these are where our opportunities are. Um, so we can give our local vendors and our local business people uh, a better opportunity to be able to bid on those to me, this is good for local vendors and it helps uh, employment with them. So this is a modernization practice into how we purchase uh, goods and services for the city. Issue number five uh, is hiring preference um, for veterans and Akron residents. Obviously, you do not need to be a city of Akron resident to um, work in the city. And the city fought pretty long and hard um, for a long time to make that uh, it, that you had to. We lost that fight at the Ohio Supreme Court a while back, about 10 or 12 years ago. Um, but we think, and I, and I, I think that you know, if you're going to work for the city, if we can give preference points to veterans and people that live in the city, um, makes better opportunities for local residents to be able to obtain those, um, those job opportunities. Uh, it's good local. Uh, it's good for our city. Uh, and that is issue number five. And that helps uh, people obviously get their foot in the door uh, with a hiring opportunity for the city of Akron. Issue number six really came about um, with the advent of COVID. Um, city Council really didn't have rules, and having spent seven years on Akron City Council, we really didn't have rules where it said, were we allowed to meet virtually? 
um, we had to, um, as, as COVID hit, you know, right about mid-March, um, city council still needs to do its business and, and the city still must need to do its work, but it didn't have rules and procedures, but how, how they can meet virtually. So what this will do, this will mirror those state and federal laws that will allow us to meet virtually um, and really enhance that um, transparency and accountability by establishing rules for executive session, meeting by video and teleconference that comply with state law and also enhances the public access to city records by allowing for the publication of city council notices online. Like I said, having spent seven years on Akron City Council, if we did have a special meeting, a lot of times it was you had to notify a person by knocking on the door and handing them a letter. Uh, said there was going to meeting, there was going to be a meeting the next day. You had to adjust your schedule. This will allow some of those publications to go online and really take advantage of the opportunity of not necessarily a publication or writing a letter and hand delivering it, which was uh, fairly arcane um, to do that, but it does enhance the transparency to uh, allow city council to modernize uh, their procedures. Issue number seven really was brought about by the board of elections, which asked the city to change its charter. If you wanted to change the charter and give those notices to Akron City Council, you had to do it within 60 days. Well, with the advent of how elections are run, um, really that time frame of how they have to get the ballots ready for overseas ballots for people who are serving or, or even working overseas, when they get those ballots, they didn't have enough time to prepare them by the time you had to certify the petition, get it to the Board of Elections, get the ballot out, and then send them and not be able to make changes because once the ballot goes out, you know that's going to be it. So what it did is it pushed that deadline back from 60 days to 100 days. That gives the Board of Elections the best amount of time to be able to prepare that ballot and send those out to those people who are serving overseas in the military, who are working overseas, but are still voting here. So it just extends that deadline a little bit from 60 to 100 days. And that is issue number seven. Um, I urge you all to go out and make sure that you vote on November 3rd. Um, absentee ballots should be um, being sent out as we speak. If you get those, make sure you fill them out, either use the Dropbox, either go early vote or use your polling location. It's gonna be safe, it's gonna be secure. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to the update if you have questions. And you say, well, listen, you always talk too fast, I can never understand you. If you have questions, you need more context, please either email us, contact us on social media, be more than happy to provide a little bit more context or a little bit better of an explanation and kind of go from there. So have a great week and, and enjoy the weather. See you, Akron.